Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here, and today is Casing Tuesday, and that's the day when we take a card out of the catalog and give it a makeover. And each week we pick a specific card to make over, and there's a group of us that all works on the same card, and we all come up with different designs because we substitute out different stamp sets, maybe different colors, and then we um, post them over on our Casing Tuesday Facebook group. And we invite all of you to come and join us over there and to post your own cards um, made with that very first uh, starting point. And it's a really great exercise if you're new. It's a great starting point. And if you've um, been around for a while and you have your own style already, it's a great way to get out of your comfort zone. Um, this week's card is the perfect example of that for me. I, um, it's probably, um, I, I don't know how I would put my style, but I think my style is a little bit more clean and simple. So I had to find a way to work with this week's style and um, see what I could come up with instead of the style that the original card was. So it's it's great for people um, like myself to challenge myself a little bit instead of just choosing always the same style um, that I'm comfortable with, just something a little bit different. Hello to everyone who's joined me this morning. Um, I will talk to everyone at the end. If you have any comments for me, please post them and questions, I love to answer them. And um, today I'll show you what card we're going to be using. Let's see, it's right here. So look at this card. It has got um, a lot of stuff going on. It's got these die cut pieces that are extending beyond this label, but we can break this, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just have to stop for a second. Um, I wish I could turn my camera around. I just looked out onto my backyard and there's two geese um, walking with uh, little baby goslings. And that's the first time I've seen um, goslings this year. They're just itty bitty tiny little yellow fluff balls. And it just, just caught my attention just like that. Oh, they're so cute. Um, sorry, I, I just, you know, my heart and animals, uh, I just had to, had to say something. Okay, so let's get back to this card and let's break it down a little bit. So it's really not a hard layout, so that's why I was able to translate it to make it into my card. But you could definitely do a label and put die cut pieces behind it. That's probably the easiest way uh, if you just copy the style of the card. Um, let's have a look at the sketch here. So we've got, you know, our um, base, the card front measures four and a quarter by five and a half. And then the paper piece measures approximately four and, a, four and a quarter by five and a quarter. And then we've got a piece that's about four and a quarter by three and one eighths. So that is probably gonna be your focal point. Um, and then you've got a label area and you can make that label whatever size you want. So these are just kind of some base measurements in case you um, need a little help with those. So I'm gonna switch over to my other camera and let's start talking about the card that I made today. Okay, so this is my card for today. It's this um, card using the Happiness Abounds bundle and the new ink colors. And if you don't already know, we have a fabulous new starter kit special with the new in colors. And um, so if you're interested in that, um, definitely make sure um, to pop on over to my join page. The description is, or the link is down below in the description of this video. Um, and the, basically um, the, the starter kit is normally $99, but, um, and you get to choose $125 worth of products. So it's always a good deal. But during the month of May, you also get an in color package with the ink pads, the card stock and designer series paper. So I just love using the new in colors this time of year cause they're new and I just want to use them all the time. So this, card I could have colored in the flowers but I like how they look just stamped in a color and because the background paper is pretty dark it really makes these blooms pop 
like like it is. And I'm going to show you, we have a new um, masking paper product. So I'm going to show you how to use that today to mask up and to add leaves and everything. So this looks like one big stamp, but really it's um, a bunch of stamps that I've just layered on top of each other using the masking technique. And here is the Happiness of Bounds bundle. I really like this bundle. Um, especially because we've got dyes to match the flowers and we've got some really beautiful greetings. I love love it, um, when they use cursive and um, printing all on the same um, stamp. I think it looks really nice. So I really gravitate towards the set. And then I'm also using the stylish, it's called Stylish Shapes bundle to create that little um, banner label and actually there are some circles missing. I've been using them. Um, so they're over on my other die cutting machine, but um, there is a full complement of circles for these dies as well. Okay, and then these are the in colors. Um, and I used, this This card has an Orchid Oasis base, and then I used Starry Sky Designer Series paper. So I mixed a little bit. These two purpley blues kind of work well together. But today we're going to make a card using Sweet Sorbet. So I'm not going to do, um, I won't have as much color contrast um, between the back of the card and the paper this time. So we'll see how it looks um, using a different paper because I wanted to see, you know, can we make this card in other colors? Okay, so to get started, today we're going to use Sweet Sorbet. And I start off with a card base and this I like to do the tent fold. So this measures 11 inches by four and a quarter inches and I scored it in half at the five and a half inch mark. And then you just fold it in half. And you can do this on your trimmer and then score it on your simply scored or you can also score on your trimmer. Um, and then I've got a piece of designer series paper and I cut this to four and a quarter by five and one eighths. I went a little bit shorter on mine. And so I'm just going to layer these two pieces up with some Tombow. And this is going to be centered. Oops. It's going to be centered if I can get it centered from top to bottom. Okay. All right. Okay, so then I'm gonna take a piece of um, paper and my um, focal point layer is four and a quarter by three and a quarter. And we're going to stamp some blooms in these two colors. The the bloom is going to be in Sweet Sorbet and the leaves will be in Parakeet Party. So I've got um, this, this uh, first bloom. This is the biggest one. I'm going to ink it up. And this is the one that's going to be on top. So, And I'm going to stamp this about an eighth of an inch from the bottom and about half an inch from the left side and I'm just going to stamp it down. So then I cut, I'm going to see if I, oh, where did my masking paper go? Oh, let me grab it. Let me grab my masking paper. Okay. So the masking paper comes in a sheet and I've already cut into this machine. You, you get several sheets in the pack and um, it comes, there's a, a glossy side and there's a um, kind of a rough side. It's not particularly rough, but it's, you can tell this one feels like paper and the other kind of feels glossy. So you will, if you're doing a traditional mask, I, you would stamp and then you would cut out. You would stamp on the rough side and then cut out. And if you have a die, like a matching die like we have, I'm going to cheat. And I'm actually going to not even stamp the image. I just went and I ran this through my die cutting machine and I got a piece like this. And we can reuse this a few times. 
Um, just make sure if you start to see ink coming through this, um, then you need to stop using this because um, it will uh, bleed through to the bottom. So um, I would think about three times on a bold stamp on a line drawn, you might be able to get away with doing it a little bit longer. Um, if you can dry your mask in between, you could probably reuse your mask um, over and over again. So with the die being just a little bit larger than the actual stamp bloom, we're gonna need to move this um, mask around a little bit. So you can see I already used this one before and I'm just gonna fit it over top. And what I wanna do, I'm gonna be stamping the next blooms over here. So I'm gonna fit this over here. I'm not gonna actually push it down all the way because it's easier to pull it off if it's not, because um, I'm just stamping on this end for now. So I'm just gonna leave it uh, just like here with this piece sticking out. And then we're going to take our first bloom, the smaller one, let me, I'm gonna bring this card over here so I can kind of follow along on my pattern. And we're gonna put this flower kind of coming off the side right here, like that. I'm not gonna lift that off yet. I've got a mask for this flower. Also, I die cut it. I'm gonna show you, this is one that I've die cut and I, I haven't peeled it off yet. So once you've die cut it, there's a backing to this. And it's basically, the backing is um, glossy. And then, I'm just gonna peel this off. Then this side is kind of like a post-it note. So it's sticky, but it's sticky all the way through. I used to use post-it notes to mask, but then the whole post-it note wasn't sticky all the way. This has better coverage. So this time I wanna stamp my floral um, up in this area here. I think this mask is positioned okay, but you know what? I could peel it off just a wee bit and just reposition it. Just let me see, make sure I've got this here. Okay, just reposition it just a little bit so that we can see um, a little bit of the edge of the flower because that's going to make for a better stamped image. And then we're going to mask off this area right here. So you can see there's partial ink from another flower that I stamped, but you can see I've got that little red line from this flower and this little red line right here. And our next flower is going to be stamped here. So it's going to be tucked under this flower and this flower. So now I'm gonna ink this up. And I'm just gonna kind of position this a little bit over top of both of those flowers. Okay, so now um, I'm gonna peel this one off. Put that over here and this one off. And now we're going to do our leaves. So for this one, I'm just gonna reposition this to this side because I'm gonna stamp a leaf off here. So I wanna see a little bit of the red rim right here. Let's, I'm just gonna put that away for a second because we need it to stamp the image of the happy birthday. So we're gonna take the leaves and we're going to stamp them over top right here. And then I'm just gonna peel that off and you can see how those leaves are now tucked underneath there. And then we're going to tuck some leaves under this floral. So I'm gonna reposition this one. If my die cut had been uh, smaller than my stamped image, then I wouldn't have to reposition for the leaves. But since I'm masking on different parts of the floral, I'm just always moving it to the part that's gonna be stamped on because otherwise um, there's going to be a bit of a gap in between the stamped image. So now I'm just going to stamp this one. Let's peel it off. And you can see how nicely 
um, the leaves are just touching that red line. So it just really looks nice. If you position it right, it will look really good. And then this one will come in here. And again, you can see the little bit of red line right beyond the mask. And that's what you want. And then this one, I'm going to kind of have coming off right about there. Okay. So there we go with those florals. All right, we need a banner right here. So I'm going to move these over here. Let's grab our mini boss. And we're going to take this die from the Stylish Shapes. And I don't know if you remember how I do my little mini boss sandwich. I don't use the number one base plate because it's a little thick for my machine. Um, I'm going to use the light gray plate, which is number three, and then the two clear plates that are labeled two. So I'll put a three and then two, and then I'll grab a scrap piece of cardstock and my die. And let me sandwich this, and I'm going to run this through. Mini boss. Okay. There is my little die. I love the little stitching along there. Okay. And then we're going to take our greeting, the happy birthday greeting. And... I think I cleaned it, but let me just double check. I don't want to muddy my image. Oh, and I'm going to protect my surface because I might go off a little bit. I'm not 100% sure. Just scrubbed a little scrap piece of computer paper. And then I'm just going to hover over top till I think that looks centered. And peel it off. Okay. So I think I've got everything stamped that I need. Okay, and then we need to glue this on here. So you could also stamp in more than one color of bloom if you wanted to. I just chose to do all the same color. It's easier to do it that way. Right, and then I'm going to attach this with dimensionals. I left the space up top here. Huh. When I'm looking at these two, they almost look like they were different sizes, but they're the same size. Maybe just depending on where I stamp my bloom, I might have gone a little bit lower on one than the other. And I just put three dimensionals on the back of that. And then we'll just place it on there. And then the last thing I want to do is add some of these little dots. On here. The, these dots are kind of cool. These are the 2022-2024 in color dots and they're not all the same color. They're kind of ombre so they go lighter and darker on all of them. So you can choose different intensity of dots when you're bringing your card together. So I'm just choosing some different colors to create my image. So here are my two cards. 
And you can see on this card, I have a little bit more contrast because I chose Orchid Oasis as my card base and then I use Starry Sky as my paper. So there's a little bit more contrast in these in my purple card, purpley blue card, than there is on my red card because um, I'm using the same color. But basically you can just kind of mask out those florals. and. Today I chose not to color, but if you would prefer to color, then just stamp it in Memento ink and then color it. And I would color it with Stampin' Blends. So I did this card, I don't know, about maybe two weeks ago when I did the Rainbow of Happiness card. And this one uses uh, the rose from this same stamp set. So if you really want a vibrant color, and this one has more vibrancy anyway because we've got the different um, layers on the background, but if you really want a lot of color to it, um, you can stamp in black like I did here and then color in with um, the Stampin' Blends. But either way, this one right here is a much like simpler card to stamp and I think it looks just as beautiful. Um, just in a different way. So you can choose how you want to use these images and especially I think this particular uh, stamp set, the Happiness Abound stamp set, lends itself well to just stamping in color um, and you don't even have to color your images like I did here. So what do you think? Do you have the new in colors? Which one's your favorite? Um, I, I think right now I'm gravitating towards three of them and they'd be Parakeet, which is what I stamped the leaves in, and then Orchid Oasis, my card base, and then one I didn't use today is Tahitian Tide. But I wanted to use uh, Sweet Sorbet today just to kind of see. It's a, it's a light red is what I, I would think it, it it really does look like a kind of a strawberry sorbet um, so I think that that looks kind of nice too all right I'm um, coming back over to you guys so I have a host code going this month if you place an order with me that is over $50 I will be sending you the beautiful heart pearls um, in June and um, so you just need to use the host code and spend 50 with me and then um, if you at least spend $15 with me you will get a tutorial and all size orders over $15 will get a tutorial as well so I wanted to point that out and our in color starter kit let me just show you where do I have it oh here are the extras that you get with the In Color Starter Kit. You get the In Color Grid Paper, a package of the In Color Card Stock, you get all five of the ink pads, and you get a pack of the Designer Series Paper. So it really is a, a great deal right now um, getting the Starter Kit. It's just a great deal. All right, I am going to answer all of your questions and say hello. I hope you're all having a good day. The sun is shining here. Good morning, Karen from sunny New Jersey. I'm glad you have sunshine today. Oh yeah, the goslings were adorable. Just I couldn't I couldn't stop my brain from processing that. So I'm sorry I had to digress. I wish I could. The way my setup is now, it's hard for me to turn my camera around um, because I'm using both my laptop and um, a different camera and both of them are very stationary. So it's hard for me to turn it around. It just was really cute to have them walk across. I've seen some interesting things while I've been sitting here, not always while I'm on camera, but we have, I've seen fox and coyote and um, sometimes, um, we have these big turtles that come and lay their eggs up on the, um, it's just, it's very neat to see what comes out of the river, like little, um, I have seen a river otter, um, but not very often. I, I've only seen a river otter once, but I, we do have muskrat around here. All sorts of things, bald eagles, and we're actually, it's kind of interesting because we're um, in the city of Newton, but we, and, and there's like, 
two highways that run really close by here and um it, it just feels it feels a little bit like we're out in the country just because of the street that we live on so I really like that I don't know if I could live here if I didn't have a little bit of nature interacting with me so I don't know if, how you guys are but I I love having nature interactions good morning D and it's hot today oh my goodness that's a change from last week isn't it good morning Alita um, Aw, Karen says my card is simply beautiful. Well, thank you. Good morning, Amy. And she wants to learn the masking technique. Well, that's great. And I love this masking paper. It's um, nice to have paper versus post-it notes because you've got that big full coverage. And basically, I think the, the mistake that people make when masking is um, covering up the entire image. You always need to have that little bit of line showing where you're going to stamp. And, and if you do that, your image is gonna butt up right next to the other image. If you cover the entire image and then stamp, um, you will have a little bit of a gap line. And you could probably correct that if you have um, a marker in the same color or if it's black ink like a, a black um, thin line marker so you can correct it but if you just move it just so you see the edge of your stamped image that that will probably be the easiest way to to mask and play around with it it's actually kind of fun to be able to layer images and um, sometimes if you have really cute animal images you can make some really cute cards um, having those animals do different things or hold different objects um, just by masking them on to to the, per the animal okay let me see um, good morning Ellie and Ellie's having a beautiful day in New York State. Um, Ellie loves the stamp set. I do too, I was drawn to it right from the beginning. I only allowed myself to buy one floral stamp set during the pre-order and it was this one. So um, there were some other ones, but I thought I would have the most fun with this one. Um, so yes, Amy. Um, so Amy asked a really good question about the masking paper and I don't know where my full pack went to be honest I'm working on several projects at the same time um, but basically it it comes like in a little um, stack so all the pages are they are seven inches by five inches so this sheet um, starts off as seven by five and there is a split in the middle of this page right here. So if you stamp something over top of this split, it will be really easy for you to peel back. If you stamp something on either side of the split, it will be a little um, harder to peel off, but you can still peel off with the edge. Um, and then this entire back side is sticky. So it's not like a post-it note where you'll just have like a partial stick area, stuck area or sticky area. This whole back is all sticky and the front part is matte, like it's, um, it's rough. One, so you always wanna stamp, if you're gonna stamp and cut out, you're gonna stamp on the rough side and then you're gonna cut out around. But since I had dies, why would I even bother to stamp first? Just go ahead and just cut out. Um, but make sure when you cut out, here's a little thing, um, because you want the mass to be in the right direction, if you're cutting with the dies, you're gonna cut into the rough side just as if you were going to stamp on this side. So for your image to be, if it's not symmetrical, you'll want it to be in the correct direction. So you're gonna cut down like that. So the sticky side is on the correct side. I hope that answers your question. Um, Karen says she loves the card with the new ink colors. And um, Cindy loves the cards too, thank you. I think you said it, Dee said it was a pretty card too. Dee said her favorite color is Orchid Oasis, then Tahitian Tide, but they're all pretty. Um, Deborah says she loves the cards. The red and blue would be great for Memorial Day. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, that would be nice. Um, and this one would be good for Canada Day. <laughs> and and then you could do red and white and blue for Memorial or Fourth of July, right? Um, so it's it's nice that um, uh, you can get a whole bunch of holidays out of the the in colors. Um, red is one of those colors that is used for a lot of holidays like Christmas and Valentine's Day and uh, a lot of the patriotic both Canada and and the US um, use a red so um, that's kind of fun um, hi Mary I'm so glad you're here um, Cindy said she always got a gap in the past so just remember just show a little bit of your stamped image underneath before um, just on the edge and you should be good and if you notice that you're still getting a gap then you're gonna have to move it back even more uh, scrap paper is your friend stack up some scrap paper and then just play around and see how any particular stamp works but for me in particular like my stamping style my stamping pressure all I need to see is the edge of that little line and I'm good for the mask um, D says thank you for the tip of not covering up the complete image when masking great tip thank you I think that's probably with masking that's probably the thing that um, creates the most problems when people mask is by wanting to cover it all up um, and if you think about it, it just makes sense. Even though, um, you know, we think of paper as being fairly flat, just the little bit of height, and the masking paper is really thin. It's, it's thin like a thin post-it note thin. But even just the little bit of height of the paper and the stamp going over that top of that bump makes that part of the, the stamp not contact um, right next to the the mask right it's it's not going to have a good connection unless you really squeeze down hard and generally we don't want to press down our stamp super hard because then we distort our image so if you're using normal pressure then it, it stands to reason that there would be a gap just because of that little um, uh, difference in in the paper um, and going over top of both layers like that Karen said she'll be casing my card. Thank you, Karen. That's the best compliment ever if someone cases your card. Well, guys, I hope you have a great week and I hope you have sunshine in your forecast. And I will be here on, um, actually, I'll be over on my YouTube channel on Friday with a 3D project or a... Um, or a fancy full card. I haven't decided yet for this week, but I will be creating something for you on Friday that hopefully you'll want to copy. Okay, I will see you then everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.